say the word. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this morning, Lord God. New mercies, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord God, for your protection. We just thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord God, for being so kind with us, Lord God. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for your safety, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for your comfort, for your peace, for your joy. We just thank you, Lord God. There's so much to be grateful for this morning, Lord God. We just want to give you the praise. We just want to give you the honor, Lord God, for who you are, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord God, for everyone that's here, Lord God, everyone that is watching, Lord God. We just ask and we thank you, Lord God, for, pre for preparing our hearts and our minds, Lord God, to receive your word this morning, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that we're not going to just hear your word, we're going to do it, Lord God. We're going to apply it. We're going to implement it in our lives, Lord God, because you're soon to come, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for your grace today. Bless, Lord God, our, uh, our pastor. And we just thank you, Lord God, for everyone that is working this morning, Lord God. Continue to wash us and wash our hearts with your word, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let your mind stand in God. Could you please join me in going to the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 14. When you have a say, Amen, the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 14. We're going to read verses 14, 15, and 16. And it reads verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Are you ready? The title of the message this morning is Clean Yourself. Clean Yourself. Clean Yourself. Yes, Clean Yourself. The dirty, clean yourself. Amen. Clean it. <laughs> clean yourself. Uh, just thinking about that, that's going to come out some hard ways this morning. Clean yourself. Let's go to 1st Thessalonians chapter 5. Praise the Lord. I know y'all. Uh, if y'all if feel your cold under the, the top, maybe, maybe next week I won't put the top on so y'all have the sun. Now everybody will have the sun shining on them. Next week we're taking communion, so that's why we're preaching today, clean yourself. So you got seven days to clean yourself. So we can take communion next Sunday. And we can feel like we're clean. Notice I said feel like it. <laughs> you know, because we got we got a lot of dirt on us, y'all. We got a lot of dirt on us. You know, but thank God that we we're, we're, we're fixing it. We're you know we're doing better. We're, we're cleaning ourselves. First um, Thessalonians chapter five. We're going to read verse 9. I think I'm just going to. Let's read 9 and 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. Let's read. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Now, the, the main part I'm going to deal with in this, these two verses is, for God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. We're not here to fight nobody. We're here to get saved, live saved. We're not here to debate race, creed, color, sex. We're here to live holy. We're here to make it to heaven. We're here to be saved. See, that's why we can't go around fighting. That's, he, he have not called us to fight against the government, to fight against all of these different issues that people got. That's not why we're called. We're not called here for that. We're called to be saved. We're called to be holy in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. See, like I'm so far from you. I am. <laughs> Amen. Um, we're, we're, we're not called to fight. We're not called to rap. We're not called to debate. We're called to be saved. We're called to be holy. So clean yourself. Clean yourself. Amen. And, and when you think about it, the, the only way to be clean is the word of God. The only way to be true, the only way to be free from error, and the only way to stop making mistakes, the only way for us to do right, the only way to clean yourself is to know the scriptures. That's the only way you can clean yourself. The only way you can control your attitude is to know the scripture that tell you how to do it. The only way you can love, you gotta know the scripture. The only way you can forgive, you got to know the, you got to know the scriptures. Amen. You can take a shower and don't use no soap. And you step out of the uh, 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 have you ever took a shower? You don't have to say yes to this. But you, you took a shower and then you got out the shower and your skin was sticky. If your skin was sticky, you were clean. That water just beat off of you. When you get out the shower, your skin should be smooth and silky and soft. And, but if you get out the shower and you still sticky, or you get out the shower and you still funky, if you get out the shower and you still stinky, you're not clean. If you're using the word of God, hallelujah, and you can sin willfully, then you're not cleaning yourself. 
if, if, if you read the word of God and you don't believe it, you're not cleaning yourself. If God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, and you think he left you at any point in time, then you won't read the scriptures. So therefore, you're not using soap. You're not using the word. You're not believing what you read. Amen? So clean yourself. It's time for us to do what? First John chapter 1. Let's go to First John chapter 1. Clean yourself. Clean yourself. And what we're going to talk about today is that the Word of God is the only thing that can clean. Man, way of thinking, man, teaching, man, philosophy, man, ideals cannot clean you. Cannot. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Man can't help you. Man can't do it, y'all. The only way man can help you, if you really want to say he can, is to guide you to the Word of God. Again, the only way that you can stop messing up, the only way you can stop messing up, you've got to believe the Scriptures. The Scriptures tell you how to stop making mistakes. The Scriptures tell you how to stop uh, uh, causing confusion. That's why I say we we, we, we we was not called to ground. Now, if God say, I didn't call you all to fight, why are you all fighting? If I didn't call you to uh, uh, go out and debate other people's ideas and systems, I called you to be saved. Amen? So I called you to make peace. I called you to just love people regardless of how they think and how they feel and how they act. I, that's what I called you for. I didn't call you to fight against nobody. We don't have to fight. Oh, hallelujah. Chapter 4, verse 1. Read, what does it say? Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going into the world. Try the spirit. If they're telling you to do something that the scripture tells you opposite, that's who the liar is. It's not, it's not the scripture. The scripture is never lie. So if you want to, if you determine and debate it, am I telling you the truth? Then compare what I say with the word of God. If the word of God is different than what I say, please believe the word of God. Don't believe me. Don't believe me. I tell preachers when they, somebody, sometimes somebody asks me, they say, "Well, the point is, how do we get a sermon?" Now I know this. They got books on tell you how to get a sermon. Let me tell you the simplest way to get a sermon. You get a thought. Let's say it's your thought. Let's say God doesn't give you the thought. But you got a thought. Take your thought. Now, find a scripture that agrees with your thought. And then you can make a sermon from that. Now, but the scripture has to, you, your thought has to agree with the scriptures. So if your thought don't agree with the scriptures, I can guarantee you that's a bad thought. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Or I tell them, if, if you find a scripture that you love, there's a word in there that make that scripture to be what you think it is. Take the definition of that word. Notice what I'm saying. Take the scripture, but there's a word in it that's going to capture your attention. Or oh, maybe two words or three words. Whatever word or words that capture your attention. Go find a definition that agrees with the scripture. If you can't find a definition of those or that word, then your, your, your thinking is wrong. Because now you have to get away from the scriptures to make your thought or your definition match. It doesn't work like that. You have to match the scripture. The scripture doesn't have to match you. So what am I saying? You need to clean yourself. Nobody... Go clean themselves without taking a shower. Wash them. You got to be washed. You can't get dirt off you. Spot bath. There's no such thing as a spot bath. And then you can't, you can't go in the bathroom and just wipe under your arms to get the funk out. You got funk all up between your legs. You got funk all in the back of your butt. You got funk everywhere. Your feet is dirty. Amen. Clean yourself. Get in the water. 
In other words, you can't get one scripture and think you got it right. Because the word of God is a whole lot of, you got to clean yourself. You got to take the word of God and you have to use it. Every word, every phrase, every scripture, you have to use it. Otherwise, you're not going to be clean. Amen? Come on, read that again. He said, try the spirit. Whether they be of God. Stop thinking they and no. We are not called to wrath, you all. We're called to be saved. So, who gets in the shower to clean himself, but don't use no soap? So you go, you know how well, sometimes parents tell the kid, you hit the water, turn on, and they come out the bathroom. So what you get, running through the water or something? You can't take a shower that fast. As soon as I hit the water running, then I hit it, 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 the door open. It's like, what did you do? Did you put soap on your towel? It takes a few seconds to lather your, your towel, doesn't it? We got a whole big old body. We got a whole lot of parts to clean. How can you get out the shower that fast and say, you know, you ran, you turned the water on, went through it, went out there? How many people we got just reading one verse? Well, God loves them, and, that, and, they, and that's all they can preach is love. That's all they can preach. Try the spirit. If, if what they're saying doesn't agree, when we talk about the spirit and the Antichrist, if, 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 if people are preaching and they're not giving you the word of God, they're not lathering you with soap and you got sun. If they're not scrubbing you, if they're, watch this, if they're not correcting you, I do not get in the shower to come out the way I went in. I got in the shower to clean. Listen, I don't listen, read, preach the word of God and come to church to leave the church the way I came. Then I didn't need to go to church. I don't read the word of God to remain the same. I want to be, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. St. John, chapter 17. St. John, chapter 17. Hallelujah. St. John chapter 17. We're going to start, we're going to read one verse, I think, over here. Let me see. Verse 17. Verse 17. St. John chapter 17. Verse 17. What does it say? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word separate them. Sanctify here means to separate. Separate them with truth. When we got the truth, we can't stand in the presence of eyes. When we have the truth, we can't stand. I can't stand in the presence of eyes. I can't say, pull me out from among people that don't want the truth. Pull me out from among people that got a different take. Listen, nothing is true but the scriptures. I don't care who come along and come up with something different. If you want to stop making mistakes, if you want to stop messing up, if you want to stop uh, having uh, uh, error in your life, if you want to stop going wrong, the only thing that can correct you, the Bible tells us how to be husband, how to be wife, tell the children how they're supposed to obey their parents. The Bible tell you what to eat, what not to eat. Because he said, take, listen, take no thought of what you're going to eat. Go get Jesus direction on eating. Get Jesus direction on your clothes. Get Jesus directed on your shopping. He said, acknowledge me in all your ways and I will direct your path. Get Jesus uh, 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 direction on the job. Get Jesus direction on choosing your spouse. Get Jesus direction on leadership. Get Jesus directed on preaching. God said, come to me for everything. So all we got to do is stick with the scripture. Well, people want to say, well, God gave me an education. God taught me this. But God said, acknowledge me in all your ways after you. Or does he say, acknowledge me in all your ways, period? I don't care how much information I got. That's why I love the way I preach. I don't care how much much I've studied the scripture. I still, hallelujah, write down words and phrases, and I let God get up here and do the talking. Because I don't know what y'all need to hear. Hallelujah. We have to get God permission. As long as I stick with the scriptures, I am never wrong. 
because that's the only thing that's right. I can't take a shower without water. The Bible, we want to see that the scriptures say that the words is the washing. Listen, nothing can wash us like the word of God. Hallelujah. Because it shows us all of our flaws. It shows us when we mess it up. It cleans if we use the water, if we use the scripture. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Nothing else is true but the word of God. Nothing. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much philosophy you can come up with. Listen, there's only one thing that's right, and that's the Word of God. Amen? Sanctify, sanctify. I want to be sanctified. St. John chapter 13. Hallelujah. I want to be sanctified. One verse, verse 10. Talking about truth. Jesus said unto him, He that is washed need is not saved to wash his feet, but it's clean every whit, and ye are clean but not all. You don't need another a word. You don't need another book. You don't need another guidance. If you stick with the word of God, you're clean. You, you, don't, need, you, you don't need a degree to be smart. Jesus didn't get a degree. The apostles didn't have no degree. He got off, Peter got off the boat fishing and knew everything about God in three and a half years. He went to school, all right. He went to school of Jesus Christ. He went to school of the scripture. He went to school listening, getting direction from God. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, it, 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 the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. We're going to read that one later. Unto God, unto God. Do you think God is interested in you learning how to be a basketball player? You can have a whole lot of money. God's not interested in that. I'm interested in do you know how to live holy? Hallelujah. So read that verse again. Verse 10 said, Jesus said unto him, He that is washed needed not save to wash his feet. In other words, God said, All you got to do is wash your feet when it comes to the word of God. All you got to do is just do what the scripture says. That's all you got to do. Maybe you won't caress some. Maybe you won't use eye for some. All you need is soap. You don't need four bars of soap. You don't need to buy no expensive soap. All you need is some soap to get in that water and wash yourself. Hallelujah. And watch this. You can't clean yourself with cold water. Cold water do not remove oil. Your body is full of oil when you bury it. You need hot water to get that oil off your skin. Hallelujah. Y'all jump in there. Take a, if you want to take a cold shower because you're hot or something, that's fine. But you're not clean. In other words, you can listen to man distorted version of the word and get excited and feel good, but guess what? You're not clean. Oh, you can listen to man ideals, but guess what? You're not clean. You can get in that cold water and wash all you want, and I guarantee you, you are not clean. Hallelujah. What am I saying? You can get over here and serve the word of God and live in flesh and have fun, but you're not clean. Because the word of God is designed to reprove, correct, instruct you. The word of God is designed to, as he put it, all that day of God and in Christ Jesus, you're going to struggle over here. Listen, straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Listen, it's time for you to clean yourself. Clean yourself up. Listen to the word. It's time to clean yourself. Listen, y'all, we're filthy, we're dirty, we're nasty, we're stinking. Hallelujah. We're not worth a, a, a blood nickel. Clean yourself. It's time to clean yourself. Do what the word said and stop listening to what they say. The word of God said you can't do certain things. Stop it. You can't do it. You can think about it. You can feel good. I don't care. Listen, the only way you're going to get to heaven, you got it. Mm. Come on. Look at another verse. Chapter 14. Chapter 14. Same book. Verse 6. What does it say? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. I don't care what people preach. Jesus said, I'm the only one that knows what's right. Jesus said, I'm the only one that knows what's right. If Jesus don't tell you it's okay, it's not okay. If Jesus tell you to do it, you have to do it. You can't expect nobody else to give you direction.
actions on what's right with Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the truth, the truth. Jesus said, I'm the truth. If I tell you you got to hate your mama to get to heaven, you got to hate your mama. If I tell you you got to hate your own self to get to heaven, you got to hate your own self. If I tell you, but now you got to figure out what I mean by that. That means you got to come, oh, hallelujah. When I, when I, I, I don't like soft plush towels, you know, bath towels. I, I don't like them when they soft. I like them hard. I like them screw. I like the, I like the towel that scrubs my skin. I, I me and my wife was in San Diego years ago, and this lady was selling, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's like a, a plastic. She, she made this thing, it's plastic. It's got two, two loops on the end, and in the middle, it's, 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 it's shaped like this on both sides. But you can drop a bar of soap inside of one of the ends. And it lather up, but you can take it and you can scrub your back real good. That's why you got two things where you can hold it. And you can do this like a shiny shoe. I love that thing. It, scr it scratches you real good. It, 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 listen, I like to be scrubbed. I know some people want that. So I don't want no soft towel. I want a rough towel. Give me a soft towel to dry off with, but give me a rough towel to take a bath with, to shower. I need my skin. In other words, don't preach to me no smooth thing. Preach to me rough thing. Tell me, because I know I'm no good. Tell me the truth. I want to be clean. I want all that dead skin off me. I want all of the things off. I don't want to think, listen, I don't want my good to be evil spoken of. I want to abstain from all appearance of evil. I want to be clean. Clean yourself. Scrub yourself. How many of y'all don't even wash between your toes? That's why your feet stink. And they really stink when you don't drive between your toes. That's why your feet stink. But you can hurry man and say your feet stink because you got bad feet. No, no, no. This is all y'all that got stinky feet. From now on, wash between your toes and dry between your toes and watch that stinky smell disappear. What are you doing? Your neck is set and it's fester and it gets stinky. What am I saying when it comes to sin? Y'all go through all the scriptures and you wonder why you still get an attitude. You wonder why you still doubt God. You wonder why you don't believe God. Because you're not cleaning yourself. You're not listening to all of the scriptures. You take in the wounds you want. So y'all won't take a shower every day to save the soul. Yes, stink. Well, I didn't do nothing. It just stink because you got dead skin. Hallelujah. So I say, well, I ain't got to listen to the word all the time. I don't have to go up for prayer all the time. That's a lie. Yes, stink. You sin. Why don't you need to go up for prayer? I'm not. Now, you, you should have to go up for prayer for the same thing. Now, that you really fight and you want to. But listen, you need to go up for prayer for something. You did something wrong that you haven't confessed or asked God. Listen, you know, what you mean you don't need to go to prayer for every Sunday? So why do I want you to pray to cease, pray without ceasing? Because you're always doing something wrong. You see? Why don't you clean yourself? That's all you have to do is clean yourself. What's wrong with taking a shower every day? What's wrong with just to take two? What's wrong with that? You're dirty, you're stinky, you're funky, you're stinky. Why don't you clean yourself? But you want to swap bad. Well, you know, I ain't that bad. What you want to do that? You smell yourself all the time. You're immune to that funk. Oh, hallelujah. In other words, you're immune to your sin. So you don't even realize you're in sin. But when I see you, it's just as bold as daylight. Why? Because I'm not immune to sin. How raggedy you live. But you're immune to that. So you think you don't have to clean yourself. Oh, hallelujah. That's why God said, abstain from the very appearance of evil. Some of y'all breath stink. How y'all get along with smelling your breath 24-7 now when you're outside? Because you, you breathe it and it's right there in your nose. I bet you fixing that breath now. Guess what that? Somebody been smelling your breath a long time. Now you smell it. What you doing about? Because your breath always stay. It's a, oh, hallelujah. You've been always stinking. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, what, what, what was that? Did we read 14, 6? Read it again. What does it say? Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. You can't get to God without going. That's the word of God. Come on. Next one. Chapter 15. Verse 3. What does it say? Oh, hallelujah. 
Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken. Listen, the only way you're going to get clean through the word that Jesus spoke to you. How are you going to get clean when you're not even listening to his word? Because of what being said. Man, they gave you some ideas. Listen, hallelujah. Man, they gave you some thought. Listen, the only way, listen, you all, you got to clean yourself. The only way you're going to be clean is you have to do the word of God. That's the only way you will be clean. You can't get clean without taking a shower. You can't get clean. Listen, hallelujah. I see, I see people get up and leave the house and don't even wash their face. I can look at you and see if you wash your face this morning. Y'all heard me say, oh, I see you wash your face today. Have some of y'all heard me say that to you? In other words, you smell clean. You look clean. What am I saying? You don't stink today. That's why I tell you young people, when I hug you, you funky. I took a shower, but you didn't clean yourself. You didn't clean yourself. Because if you still stink after coming out of water, and then some of y'all got nerve to put perfume and cologne on funk. And you think you smell good. Remember, you smell that funk all the time. When you come around me, I ain't used to your funk. I'm not used to your funky smell. Hallelujah. Thank you. Listen, I'm not used to your stinking breath. You smell it all the time. Rub your tongue across your teeth right now. Is it bumpy? Or did it crook cross? Did you feel little dots and stuff with your tongue? You know, your tongue is very sensitive. One time I went to the dentist and I was telling her, I said, something's stuck and I can't get out. She said, uh, I said, it feels like it's dead. She said, what's the word? Is that tongue is very sensitive? She said, I'm going to find it for you when it's going to be very small. She said, because the tongue is very, do y'all know the tip of your tongue is very sensitive? Rub the teeth, rub the tongue. Come on, right now. I don't care how to see you. How does your mouth cover up? Just take your tongue and rub it all around your teeth. You feel all them bumps? You feel all them little, them little things? They feel big. They're very, very small. God is showing you how to determine how clean your mouth is. And you will feel that jump, and you won't even go brush your teeth. You can feel something. You ever felt something between your teeth and your tongue belly and you picked it out and you could barely see it? Listen, hallelujah, I'm telling you, I'm showing you how dirty you are. Go clean yourself. Y'all are so easy to ignore the word of God and you're nasty. You're filthy, but you don't seem to think so because you spill that in your mouth all the time. You think that's normal. Your teeth are supposed to be silky smooth, but they're not on you. This is bumpy and rough. Hallelujah. You think you clean on your body. You took a shower two days ago. Don't you know folks know your stink? Remember, you said it all the time, so you think it's normal. It ain't normal. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. And you get on. What was that verse? Verse 3, chapter 15. Now are you clean through the word? Listen, when I get through preaching to you today, you need to clean yourself up with the word. When you obey the word, when you do everything, when you realize, hallelujah. You know, one of the things I used to always look at when I dated one, I look at their fingers. Fingernails. I look at me too. That to tell me how clean you are. If you wash your hands regularly, you won't have dirty nails. People that's got dirty nails is because they don't wash their hands regularly. Unless you're a mechanic, because I know they grease get under there and it's hard to get out, but they got something for that. But if I see you walking around and you sharp, Michi, and I look at your fingernails, you're dirty. Trust me, I don't want to go home with you. If you can't wash your hands, you ain't washing much else. Amen. Now, I'm just telling you how I look at it. Because I know, this I'm human like you. And I got to keep my hands clean. Your hands are dirty. Your hands get, your fingernails pick up dirt from you scratching your head or scratching your arm, scratching your legs, scratching your neck. Listen, you pick up that dirt and you don't take time to clean your fingernails out. That 
that means you won't take time to wash your hands. That's why I've always told y'all, don't go in my kitchen even at the church without washing your hands. Because I know your hands are very Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But when you get the word of God, listen, let me tell you how easy it is for us to sin. Some of y'all get mad right now. Listen, look how quick you get mad because I'm telling you how dirty you are. So you get an attitude because I'm telling you you're sick. Clean yourself. Clean yourself. Come on. Chapter 17. That was 15, right? Come on, go to chapter 17. Clean yourself. That's all I'm asking you to do. This is clean yourself. That's all God is asking us today. Clean yourself. Hallelujah. John chapter 17, verse 2. Read. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, he that shall give eternal life to as many as thou. Listen, hallelujah. When you clean yourself, you can get eternal life. You don't you want eternal life? Just clean yourself. That's all you got to do. Just clean yourself. Don't you want to smell good? Clean yourself. Don't you want, don't you, you don't want people to come around you and they struggle standing in your presence? Have you ever struggled standing in a person's person called they stink? Have you ever struggled standing home in conversation with somebody they breath stink? So how would you make me feel if they have to do that with you? How do you think that's feel? A lot of y'all, your breath stink because you don't floss. You don't brush your teeth, you don't fall, you got three day old food between your teeth. You wonder why you brush it. Because you're not cleaning yourself. Y'all you wonder why y'all can't do what God tells you to do, but you don't obey the scriptures. You're not cleaning yourself. You can only be clean through obedience to the word of God. You can only be clean by washing yourself. You can only wash yourself with the... So what am I saying as I started off? If y'all want to stop making mistakes and stop having errors in your life, all you got to do is obey the scriptures. That's why I tell y'all, I don't make mistakes. Because I obey the scriptures. If the scriptures tell me to walk past this person that's sick, I'm going to walk past you. That's what this Bible... Remember I told the all under the wings of Jesus? And for some reason, people think pastor's supposed to help everybody. Huh. So why is it Jesus not helping everybody? Why is that? Why did Jesus let a person get run over when they cross the street? But you want me to run out there and stop them? Jesus didn't stop them. Hmm. Well, think about that. Why is Jesus allowing things to happen to people and he don't stop it? But y'all expect, then you get somebody that ain't passing where you're supposed to be a pastor. You're supposed to pray for everybody. Where'd you get that from? Jesus prayed for you. And, and that ain't working. But you want me to come and pray for you like my prayer won't work. The reason Jesus' prayer ain't working is because you're not cleaning yourself. You're not obeying him. Hallelujah. You're not doing. But you want me to come and pray for you. You know what did Jesus say? He said, John, if they mistreated me, you know they're going to mistreat you. So what, what, what do you want me to do? Why do you want me to change the rules when Jesus has already set the rule? Come on, what verse was that? Two. He said, and thou hast given him power over. Wait a minute. Jesus got power over all flesh. Right? And we still dirty. We still sin. We still doing things. But you want us to, you want the pastor to come along and correct everything. But Jesus ain't correcting it. Because you won't obey the scripture. What am I saying? It ain't Jesus and it's not me. It's you. Why? Because you won't clean yourself. Because Jesus said, why well, says, even though I prayed for everybody, even though I died for everybody, he said, no good thing will I hold from him that live and walk up right before me. So you want me to bless you? You want me to give you the joy that you expect to have? Well, you got to obey me. Y'all want to get, y'all want to get what your brothers and sisters are getting? Then you need to obey the pastor, obey God, obey your mom, obey your, listen, and listen, you will get what you're supposed to get. But you want the result of, you want to smell good without taking a shower. You want to use a facsimile of smelling good, which is cologne and perfume, but you don't want to get in the water. You want the blessings of Jesus Christ, 
but you don't want to clean yourself. You don't want to wash yourself. You don't want to use the word, but you want to smell good. It ain't possible. You got to get the dirt. You got to get the sin. You got to fix your life, and you smell meat. Because it gave but one thing that can clean you, and that's the word of God. Man philosophy can't do it. Man intellect can't do it. Education can't do it. Wealth can't do it. Love can't do it. Sex can't do it. You've got to do it with the word of God. If you just let the word clean you, listen, so it's time to do what? This is all. Clean yourself. We're going to take communion next Sunday. Clean yourself. So you can take communion in good standing. Same chapter, verse 6. Read. What does it say? I have manifested my name unto men which thou gavest me out of the world. Hallelujah. Thy name, brother. Thy, thy they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept up. Listen, hallelujah. The apostles kept the word of Jesus Christ except one. Look what they got. They got beat up in there. They were sawed in something. They was hung. They were crucified upside down. They were, but hallelujah, they were clean, though. All that you have got in Christ Jesus, you're going to suffer. But you got a hallelujah. If you're not living God in Christ Jesus, Notice, you got to live godly in Christ. You can't live godly outside of Christ because that's not godly. That's ungodly. But man want to tell you, let's go pick it. Black lives matter. White lives matter. Mexican lives matter. So you got to go out and fight this stuff. But you want, you think it's right because some pastor posted something on Facebook or Instagram or tweeted something. Y'all think it's okay because a man said, hallelujah. Guys, I never called y'all to rap. I called y'all to live holy. I called y'all to live in, right in Jesus Christ. But y'all coming up with this other stuff. I never told y'all to get into politics. I never told y'all to put women in high places. I never told y'all to turn churches over to children. I never told y'all, y'all told to do and y'all think it's right because Bishop so-and-so said it or Dr. so-and-so said it. God said, go ahead. Go ahead and keep taking that shower in man's intellect and see how clean you are. You want to be clean? You got to do it my way. I told you if a man don't know how to rule his own house, he ain't going to never tell the saints what to do. I have told you, hallelujah, women, you got to obey your husband as unto the Lord. I have told you, men, if you don't take care of that woman with all Secrets. I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Listen, that's the word of God. That's work. He said, and the people that's going to give you the most trouble, it's going to be in your own house. I told you, foolishness is created in the heart of a child. Y'all expecting him to think like you. You're 45 and you want a five-year-old to think like you. Well, you didn't think like a 45-year-old when you was five. I'd have told you, women well, ain't gonna ever stop talking, brothers. Women, well, I'd have told you, we ain't have to rule you. I'd have told y'all this. But y'all, y'all wanna put something else in the system and then you wonder why the house is in a disarray. You wonder why. You wonder why. You wonder why. Because y'all are not cleaning yourselves. Y'all are not sticking to the word of God. Y'all coming up with something. We equal. Ain't nobody equal to me. Nobody. Can I say that again? Ain't nobody equal to me. We ain't equal. We ain't equal. We're wherever God put us to be. See, you got these people that want to be apostles. Okay? I bet you when I get to heaven, your man won't be on one of them gates. So you can't become equal to apostles. So to them 12 apostles, you can't be equal with them. Where y'all come up with this stuff from? What, what am I saying? He said, oh, hallelujah. He said, get out from among people that don't teach you this. There ain't no more apostles. You can call yourself an apostle all you want. You are not equal with Paul. Because I'm not reading your books and preaching them. You are not equal with Peter. I'm not going around telling you 
preaching what you preaching and what you say. I'm preaching what Peter said. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What am I saying? Listen, there's only one thing that's true, and that's the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. So clean yourself. Did we read all of verse 6? Come on. Let's go to verse 14. Same book. I have given them thy word. I have given them the truth. I have given them the authority. I have given them the power to direct of all, to direct all of humanity. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God ain't gave nobody else that power but the 12 apostles. I don't, I cannot direct all humanity. All I do is preach what they preach and say what they said because God is not changing his word just because we got some millennium, just because we got some stupid kids growing up and don't want to obey the word of God. So somebody want to come up with something new because we got some children that think they smarter than us. Hallelujah. If you smarter than us, hallelujah, then why is your life raggedy? Why are you getting high and think it's okay? You are not as smart as the people going to heaven already. But we got these people, these young folks starting churches, pastoring churches, and trying to say they were taught wrong. If you were taught wrong, then why you got so much right in your system? Oh, hallelujah. Because y'all don't want to watch yourselves. A new thing. A new thing. A new thing. Listen, the Bible is so clear. Who he said going to mess up the system? Who he said was going to destroy the way the system was designed? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. What, what verse was that? Chapter 17, verse 14. Read it. He said, I have given them thy word, and the world hated, have hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not. Listen, hallelujah. The world hate Pastor Porter because I don't preach what they want to hear. I preach what's true. I'm telling you how to clean yourself. I'm telling you how to clean yourself. Listen, y'all stop using them, them big old plush towels when you take baths. Trust me, they ain't clean you. You need to be scrubbed. Y'all know that. Them, 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 them nice soft towels don't scrub you. They get they too thick. They just wipe in the dirt over them. So I say, well, I know they test me. Make me out of a life. Get a plush towel with the soap and wash this on. Get a towel that's rough and wipe this on. And rub them after you dry them off and see which one rub spill the soap. That don't ain't lying. You got dead skin that needs to come off. That towel is not getting it off. That towel is just brushing over. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, that, that's why you wonder why your skin is rough sometimes. Because you got a lot of dead skin that you didn't get off. You're not cleaning yourself. Watch this. Y'all wonder why y'all can't live holy all the time? Because y'all not cleaning yourself. You read in the scriptures and you brush it over it. You're not cleaning yourself. You read the scripture, but you're not doing it. You're not cleaning yourself. It's time to clean yourself. Stop making excuses because you don't want to stop sinning. Just tell God, I love this. Please help me hate it. Because I do love it. I'm not going to say that and tell you but why it's not good. I'm not going to say that. I may taste it after but I ain't have had it once since March the 31st of 1988. But I remember from that back in the room. Cold. I'm not going to get up here and tell you that. I just know I can't drink them no more because it's a piece of the word of God. Why y'all think people go out and do all of these sins? Because it's good. It's good. The flesh love doing wrong. You may not like it. That's why Paul said, I find a war in my memory that when I want to do good, evil shows up. He said, that I hate, I do, and that I don't want to do, that I want to do, I can't. What's wrong with me? Talk the flesh. There is no good thing in the flesh. Listen, why are we sitting around acting like that's not true? That's true. So that means don't break with it. Why did God tell us? Evil communication is going to corrupt you. But folks don't seem to believe that. That's 
the Bible, y'all. That's the Bible. Evil communication is going to mess you up. Look at all of the preachers and the teachers. Listen, look at them now. They're out here supposed to be teaching you how to live holy, and they're teaching you how to protest. They're supposed to be teaching you how to live, right? And they're teaching you how to get evil with the white man. Come on, God said, forgive them. He forgave you. And he said, if you don't forgive them, I'm not going to forgive you. And somebody justified evil? And y'all born by the okie doke just cause a man or bishop or doctor or somebody got a big congregation? He said, the blind lead the blind, and all of y'all going to fall in the ditch. Listen, it's time to clean yourself. I don't care what the white man did to my mama. I'm going to save myself. Mama, hey, I'm sorry, but mama. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. I don't care what they did with their ass. Listen, I, I don't care what folks call me. I know my nationality. They ain't going to see it. <laughs> I know my nationality. I am not an African. I did not come from Africa. I can see it. My great grandma was a full blood Indian, Cherokee. So how did I, how did I come from Africa? My daddy said, We are black Germans. That's what my daddy said. And y'all think I'm black. Indian and German. Where am I? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on. Uh, uh, that was verse 14. Verse 15 says what? He said, I pray. Not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Lord, don't take them out of that confusion. Help them know how to deal with it. But y'all, people are preaching, oh, God don't remove you. God said, I ain't remove you. Wait a minute. Jesus prayed that God don't remove you. So you think you're going somewhere? That's true. If anybody prayed God through, his prayer got through. He said, just keep them from the evil. Keep them in the world, watch it, but teach them how not to riot. Keep them in the world, but teach them how not to have vindictive spirit. Keep them in the world, but teach them how not to be evil. Keep them in the world, but just don't let them get hooked in the evil. Teach them, listen, teach them how to go to church and listen to the word. Teach them how, oh, glory, hallelujah. Read that. 15 and 16 together. He said, I pray, not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Listen, hallelujah. We are in the world, we just not of the world. In other words, I'm in it, but I don't think like the world. The world is secularized. In other words, and church folks are falling into it. Some folks are thinking it's okay for us to get involved in a lot of worldly stuff. Listen, we are not called to rap, y'all. We are not called to fight and, 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 and stir up stuff. We're not called to do that. We're called to be saved. We're called to be holy in Jesus Christ. Look at the next word. Verse 17 says, well, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Make them separate them. Show them how to separate. Teach them how to separate themselves from everybody that's not right. Did y'all get that? He said, I, I'll put this in. I want to teach y'all how to come from among the game bank. I want y'all been buddy for years. I'm going to teach y'all how to come from the, the gamblers. I'm going to teach y'all how to come. How can you teach me, Lord? He said, you got to go to church. You got to listen to the truth. You got to let me tell you, number one, you ain't no good. You don't think straight. I don't care who you think you are. I don't care what kind of degree you got. I have to teach you. First of all, you got to die out and know that you are no good. When you realize it, I can help you. But until you repent, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Clean yourself. Clean yourself. That's 
so long, Holly, so long today, please. So long today, you clean yourself. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. What do you want? What are you hoping for? If you hope, what do you hope? Are you hoping for something? Well, it didn't live like you got it. That's, that's, it's the substance. In other words, if you have no hope, there's another scripture to say, uh, 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 um, people, uh, um, uh, how does scripture go? We don't have a vision. Be prepared for that have a vision. I don't think I'm quoting it right. But the reason y'all don't go nowhere is because y'all can't see past your nose. Y'all can't see past your nose. Oh, why, why pastor don't have church and it's cold and it's supposed to be rain? Why have a church outside? Because y'all don't see past your nose. Y'all are looking at today. Pastor, you have a church tomorrow because it's raining today. I, I'm not looking at today. I ain't even looking at tomorrow because I'm praying. In my mind, that's all. I'm going to. Listen, I'm going to pray. For all of, I would have prayed for good weather every Sunday until God put us in the building. So, what, what are y'all talking about? Because she ain't got no faith. She ain't got no faith. If you don't have faith, ride on my faith. Thank you, John. Let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Clean yourself. Clean yourself, man. That's all you gotta do. Just go clean yourself. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with realizing you've been doing a bad job at, 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 at learning, obeying the word of God? What's, what, what's wrong with fixing? What's wrong with it? Okay, you take a shower once every three days. I'm telling you you're sick. People have been nice and haven't told you you're sick. I'm telling you today, shower every day, sometimes twice a day. You're sick. So what's wrong with it? Go fix it. You're not brushing your teeth good. You rubbed your tongue across your teeth and it's bumpy. You ain't brushing your teeth good. What's wrong with that? Fix it. You got toothpaste, you got a toothbrush, but you're too lazy to stand there and clean yourself better. Why? You're too lazy to obey the word of God. You're too lazy to love. You're too lazy to love your enemies. Well, God said you was an enemy on the cross and He loved you. What's the problem? Don't you want to be clean? Clean yourself. Clean yourself. Come on. What that? What we going? John chapter eight, verse thirty-two. What does it say? And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall, and I still hear preachers set, set, preacher. You don't even know the Bible enough to preach. At least get the words right. Maybe you won't preach it right. Get the words right. There's a difference between make free and set free. Y'all remember, um, I was, remember I told y'all way back when, so a lot of y'all wasn't here at that time. Remember I told y'all, when y'all walk around in your underwear sticking your butt, Remember I told you what's wrong? That means last time you took a dump, you didn't wipe yourself with it. You ain't cleaning yourself, you stink. When your underwear gets stuck in your butt, go to the bathroom and wipe your butt again and watch species come off on that toilet paper. You're not cleaning yourself. Clean yourself. What am I saying? I'm, I'm getting, how they say, down and dirty. Y'all don't realize, y'all walk around with an attitude, but you got an attitude all the time, but you think you're okay, but everybody else see an attitude. Why well, you wonder sometimes you walk up to people and they say, are you okay? You say, I'm fine. Your face says something different. And y'all are too, too, uh, such big liars, you won't say, what's wrong? Oh, I'm fine. I hate what my wife do. And I know what you get mad. I've been with you 26 years, honey. I know what you mad about in the room. And then when I cry, well, you ain't gonna change no way. Wait a minute. Now is it coming out? You still ain't told me what the problem is. You mad at me because I told you to do something you didn't want to do? 
don't know what she's saying, but I can't imagine because I know my wife. You said, honey, you upset? Oh, man, I really ain't upset. My, my problem is with her and all y'all so if y'all ask me what's wrong, you think so wrong, I'm disappointed. It might be you and it might be somebody else. So I can answer all that question. You don't make me upset, you should disappoint me. You disappoint me calling me, asking me if I have a service tomorrow. But you think it's all right. Amen, son. Ask me no question like that, you disappoint me. I mean, you don't have, you don't think I know? You don't trust me? Come on. That's what, what, that's what, that, what was that verse again? 832? Is that what it was? Read. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Listen, hallelujah. Don't tell know the truth. Watch this. Don't tell know you can't lie. So if somebody asks you, you upset, Nikki, tell them yeah. And if you're really upset, Tell them why. I'm sick of you. Hell, Naya, I'm sick of you, Naya. Be glad when you move out. That's true. And she goes, I'll be glad to move out. Yeah, move out. Why she won't be calling me? You want to come back? You like my mother-in-law. <laughs> I told my wife, we were going to die like her mother, my, her mother, my mother-in-law said, when all the children move out, you get to come home one time. <laughs> one time. I let you move out here one time with all your children. But when you move out that second time, I don't care like I got five of the room. You, they're not for you. That's, listen, that's the way she thinks. That's the way she feels. That's the truth. Will she do that? She won't sleep in there. <laughs> We ain't even, nobody gonna leave your child out nowhere. But what am I saying? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. That's the way you feel right now. Listen, right now, God is sick of us. Because we're not clean. That's why He's telling us, y'all stink. That's why He's telling us, y'all not clean yourself. Y'all hear the word, but you're not doing it. You're not using it. Soap is in the shower. Use the soap. You got plenty of water. You don't have to run through the water. You can stay in the shower for a while. Clean yourself. It take a few. Listen, it, it take time for this word to get in your members, in your head, in your body to correct you. But y'all want to read the scripture, and then you wonder why you can't do it next week. Because all you did was read it. You looked at the soap, put some on it. Listen, how many of y'all laugh in the towel one time when you take a shower? Don't raise your hand. I'm tired of staples. That's why I bought soap. Only last couple days. Maybe I think three or four days. I can't get the only thing. Because this is how we fill the soap. A whole bottle of shower. When I see the soap thing, I grab the bottom in. Lather it up. When I keep taking a shower, the, the bottom of the shower is full of soap, sir. Oh, hallelujah. Parents won't look at your kids. They won't buy, give every child their own bottle of soap to see how long it lasts. Then you know how good they're doing in the shower. They last in two weeks. <laughs> Wait a minute. Watch this. And then they come and say, when I take the shower, well, how come you got a bottle of soap that lasts you two weeks and mine lasts me three days? What's the difference? See, y'all wonder why parents are so smart. Because y'all need evidence that you're not doing what we say. Watch this. Y'all wonder why God is so smart? Because y'all need evidence of what you're doing. There's evidence. The Bible puts it this way. Your sins is manifest before the Lord. In other words, God said, I got too much evidence. You're mad. You got an attitude. You lied. To, to this person, you, you told six lies in one day, and then you telling me, and Lord, if I see him, forgive me. If. If. Because you forgot the lies you told. God said, well, I remember the lies you told. They still in my face. It's manifested. Oh, hallelujah. See, I, I hear y'all boast about how much you give it. I hear y'all say you get raises and bonuses. When y'all tell me that, the first thing I do is look at your offering. I'm going to look at the next thing. Hallelujah. 
I look at his arm for a little bit. And in anticipation for that, left the tech board at home, or he left the credit card at home, I look at the next two or three services. You got to raise how many times they did this. Those cities are manifesting. I'm watching. When I say I draw boxes, I'm watching you. And I'm just a man. That telling me you ain't clean yourself. That telling me you want to go around and boast about what God did, but then show me what God did. Because either you're lying about the raise, or you're robbing God. And in either case, you in sin. What am I saying? You're not cleaning yourself. But you're going around, watch this, watch this. Let's assume you're telling the truth. Let's assume that. You're going around giving God praise for what he did. So you use one scripture in there. Because the Bible said give God praise in everything, didn't it? And you did that, Tom. You gave God praise. In other words, you got in the water, but you didn't use no soap. Because when you gave him praise for the blessing you got, you didn't do the other part when he said, I want 10% of all your increases. So I increase your money, so why didn't I get you see what I'm saying? So did you did you get in it? Did you get did you get in the water special? Yeah, you did, but you didn't clean yourself. What am I saying? Y'all are dirty, you're filthy, you're nasty, you're sick. You brush your teeth, but you can feel yesterday's dinner in between your teeth. So did you really brush your teeth? You brush your teeth and you can rub your tongue across your teeth and it's bumps everywhere. Do y'all get the concept of what I'm saying? See, y'all do some of the scriptures, but you won't do all of them. Listen, that's why God gave me that, 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 that phrase. One scripture is no more true than another scripture. If you're going to do this one, you got to do them all. Don't try to act like you did one and you got it right. You ain't got it right. Mistake. Come on. Come on, fight this one. I love this one. Ephesians chapter 5. I love this one. I love them all, love them. When I say I love this, maybe I love it for today's sermon. Chapter 5. Distinct. Clean yourself. We have a communion next Sunday. Clean yourself. Clean yourself. Clean yourself. Everybody say, clean myself. Clean myself. Clean me. Paul put it like this, save yourself. So supporters, Jeremiah, all y'all may not take good showers, but John will walk out of that shower smelling good. I do caress soap. So my says a woman soap. That's fine. But when I walk out, I smell clean. Silky water skin. I got I got a water softening system outside my house. I want good water, good soap, and a rough towel. I want to be clean. Oh, hallelujah. I want all the dirt off me. What are you, hallelujah, what are you talking about? I want to be clean. I want to do all the scriptures that God put before me. Hallelujah. I don't want to just do one or two of them. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Feel like shout. I want to do all of them. And I'm going to work hard and get all of them. I'm not going to sit around and say, well, I got these. Ah, I can take a break. Mm. Come on, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Read, husbands. Husbands. Love your wife like Christ loved the church. Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. Some of y'all wives get on your nerves and you just won't do nothing for her. Or you slow about it. Or you complain about it. Suppose that God did that to you. Because God doesn't do that for you. God is still helping you out. God still provided strength for you. Read it. Husbands, love your wife even as Christ also loved the church and gave... How many times have I told you, husband, your wife drive the best car, your wife look the best dress, your wife don't leave the house with no money, check up on her every day and say, baby, you got money in your wallet? 
She said, well, I don't need her to have five dollars. She don't get to choose. You choose. Five dollars ain't no money for your wife to be walking around with in her pocket. <laughs> Why, do y'all got money in your pocket? I'm talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of fifty dollars or more, and that ain't no money. Possibly it's your job to make sure they got it. The only way you can get away with not getting it to is you don't have it. Not only you don't have it in your pocket, I mean it's not even it's nowhere in your bank accounts. Hallelujah. Because Christ keep you fool with me. Whenever you get hungry, you got food, don't you? Whenever you need strength, you got it. Whenever you need to think strength, you got it. Listen, Christ's bank never run out. But all you have to do is ask him and he solves it. Why is it? Why is it? Watch this. And God say, I know what you need before you ask him. Do you know what your wife needs before she asks you? Are you asking her, baby? You, do you know what your wife needs before she asks you, Jay? David, did you know what your wife need before she asked? Oh, he said, treat her the way I treat you. God said, I know your thoughts are for all men. I don't have to ask me for nothing, Tommy. I already know what you need. Sometimes I don't even ask my wife what she need. I just, only the money that's the money. I ask you what you need, take the money. Take the money. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying, y'all? Listen, the word of God is true. You do what the word says, you will never mess up. Come on. Verse 26, he said what? Watch this. Watch this. Like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Why are you so good at being a good husband? Why? Because that I want to sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water, washing of the Bible. Honey, I want to take care of you because the word said I got to take care of you because that's the way Jesus takes care of me. So I got to do the way the word of God say do it. I can't do it your way. So the point is I can't do it your way. Because the word of God tell me that I'm your head. I rule over you. The word of God say I'm your covering. The word of God say I'm your protection. I can't let you run me. Because now I done messed up the whole marriage system. I can't do it your way. I can't do it your way. Do y'all understand? Look what he said. When I do right by the scriptures, I'm sanctifying her. I'm keeping her clean. Why? Because that's what Jesus does for me. That's the word of God. Don't let nobody come along and try to tell you nothing different. That ain't the truth. They ain't telling you how to clean yourself. Listen, listen. All y'all that's not married and won't be married one day, y'all make sure y'all that God, God chose my wife. I did not choose this place. God chose her. But you have to wait on Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Watch this. He said, John, when your ways please me, no good thing. Right? Ain't that the scripture? That's the scripture, right? Will I hold? He said, a man that finds a wife finds a good, a good thing. No good thing will I hold from the John if you be right. So I was doing right. Then he gave me a good thing. Whoa, wait a minute. That ain't the best part. It's the best part. He said, and you will obtain favor. Ooh, hallelujah. You will obtain favor. I'm favored in God because he gave me a good thing because I was doing right. Hmm. Isn't that something? You are taking favor of the Lord because he gave you a bunch of troubles. That's not negative on her because it's a lot to take care of a wife and a family. That's a lot of work, man. But God said, John, you got favor, though. You got, you got favor. I gave you, watch this. Oh, my Lord. I gave you something I made weak. And I said, John, you're the only one that can take care of her for me. That's faith. God said, John, she's a weaker vessel. 
But I want her taken care of drunk. And I'm putting that responsibility in your hand. What you do, John? You ever, you ever chose? You, you have a choice. I use the wicked. They got a choice of 10 children to do something. And sometimes him and Angela leave home and they'll choose who they trust the most to protect this house. That's me. That means I know you got this under control no matter what. Let's say they leave home one day and that Simone is the oldest day. But they don't trust Simone today. And they say, okay, uh, so Leo, we're putting you in charge. That should be embarrassing to the other four oldest ones. I don't trust you today. So Leah has got favor because I know she's going to keep order. That's a terrible thing. What am I saying? Hallelujah. God said, when I don't choose you, it's because I don't trust you. Why don't I trust you? Because you don't know how to speak to the truth. You don't know how to speak to the world. Why is God not calling some of y'all to do something? Because he don't trust you. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. What verse was that? 27 says what? That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Not having spot or wrinkle of such thing that it should be holy. God, oh, hallelujah. Jesus said, I did all this because I don't want no church with no spot. I don't want nobody with no funk. I don't want nobody with no bad attitude. I don't want nobody in your feet say. I don't want nobody that do anything to make my church look bad. So clean yourself. Gosh, I don't want nobody doing nothing for me. And you're not cleaning yourself. I don't, why, look how he said, I don't want no church with no spot. No wrinkle. What else he said? What if there's another one? Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Think about that. God said, I don't want no church that when somebody look at you and they see obviously something is wrong. Spot is something that's visible, isn't it? A wrinkle is something that's visible, isn't it? Any such thing is all of those hidden sins that hasn't come out yet. God said, I don't want you. I don't want no church like that. I don't want no wife with a skirt and dress too tight. I don't want no wife she walking around showing her clean. I don't want no wife walking around with fake hair and eyelashes. I don't want no wife like that. I, I, I told her to support it. I said, God told her because he knew I wanted naturality, natural, natural beauty. But y'all want to go around and change what y'all look like. And then you wonder why God put in the Bible modest apparel. I don't want those sons looking like sisters. Any man that wear that ring look like a sister to me. I don't want my children. I don't want no church men with no men walking around here with their ring. I don't want y'all walking around with no diagrams in here. That's embarrassing to me. You can say, well, you like it. I don't care if it's still embarrassing to me. Guess who else is embarrassing to? It's embarrassing to God. What are you saying, Pastor? Any such thing. What do you think the such thing is? Anything that altered the way I made you. Listen, hallelujah. I don't preach to you all for y'all to go out and do the opposite way. That's a such thing. I don't preach to you for you to go change your behavior just because you're not in my presence. Because therefore, you're not cleaning yourself. If you, listen, hallelujah. If you clean, what did he say? If you wash yourself, you don't have to worry about washing something else. Because he said, you clean. He said, wash your feet, man. Because back in the old days, they said when you wash your feet, everything was clean. So Jesus was teaching them on the way that they lived in their tradition. Because they went in people's house. It was a honor. It was a magnificent. It was a privilege. When you walked in the folks' house, because they didn't have enclosed shoes, they wore sandals. And when somebody came in the house and they would say, wash your feet, they would say, man, you work, you're better than the president. That's why Jesus said, you wash your feet, you clean. But that's the way they lived back then. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on. 
I'm almost through. Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12. I hope I'm helping y'all. Well, I know I'm helping. I just hope y'all take the help. Chapter 12, verse, is that 17 or 7? Yeah, verse 17 says what? Y'all got it? Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. He that speaketh truth showeth forth. He that speaketh truth showeth forth. He that tell the truth show that you live it right. Read it. He that speaketh truth by a false witness. If you don't tell me the truth, I gotta watch what you say every time you open your mouth. I have to watch what you say every time you open. Who want to talk to folks and every time you open them up, you got to watch what you say. I said, hey, it is. That's stressful. In other words, they get through talking, well, I know they ain't telling me the truth. So you got to walk away knowing that they lied and you can't believe nothing they said. Guess what happens when we deal with people like that? We don't ask them no questions. We don't talk to them too much. Is it time I gotta figure out everything you tell me? If you tell me the truth, that's stressful. Yes. Who wanna deal with that? Every time I talk to you, I gotta determine, okay, you know, he lied. Uh uh, guess what? I ain't put myself through that. I just wanna talk to you. So when I talk to you, I'm saying, Praise the Lord, how you doing? Her kid, I'm gone. I don't wanna talk to you. Because I don't feel like figuring out that you be ready to lie. And you will always lie. But that's what you do. Proverbs chapter 16. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What are you saying? I don't want to hug you today because every time I hug you, you stink. And I don't feel like smelling no funk today. Y'all get it? Talking about clean yourself. Why don't y'all hug bombs? I know we don't hug now because of Corona. But what I'm saying, why, why y'all not quick to shake a bomb hand? Why y'all not quick to walk close to a bomb? Why you get away from it? Because you don't feel like dealing with no dirty stink, don't you? Hmm. Hmm. Give you something to think about. Do y'all talk to people that smoke y'all the time? Because you don't feel like smelling them on You say, come on. I don't feel like, I don't feel like inhaling. Oh, hallelujah. You have to talk to somebody, you got to shake your breath all the time. What do you do? You heard me in that conversation. All of a sudden, we know the side of it. When y'all talk to somebody that they start scratching their nose. Know what that means? Every bed you breath. I'm blocking. I'd rather smell my soapy, sweaty hand. A sweaty hand, brother, than to smell your breath. How y'all think God feel when you ain't seen it? And you want to talk to him. How do you think God feel? Hmm. Something think about it. Huh? Come on. Read chapter 16, verse 6. What does it say? By mercy and truth. By mercy and truth. Mercy meaning God put up with you. And truth. He said, I can get sin out of you. I can get your iniquity out of you. But watch this. Mercy is him putting up with you. Truth is what you have to do. For the sin to leave you. In other words, look at all of the folks out here that talk about God. <coughs> they have a problem with God and they ain't dead yet. That's him showing mercy. But they have to be truthful to get the sin out of them. Watch this. How many of y'all came to God and got saved by lying? You were telling the truth while you were down there tearing. Oh, Lord, you were telling the truth. And then he didn't kill you right away. You went back. But you were being honest then because you were scared. Oh, hallelujah. Mercy is that I haven't killed you yet. Truth is that you got to come to me and be honest. And that way I can get the sin out of you. 
Another example is if you got a sin that you love, go and tell him. He ain't killed you. He know you love it. He know you're doing it. Tell him. Say, Lord, I love getting high. Please help me to stop getting high. Help me to put that. Lord, I love sleeping around. Lord, please take that from me. Make me sick. You know, do something. Hallelujah. Make me stop being a liar. Lord, let me get caught in my lies. Because I don't want to be a liar. I want everybody to catch me in lies all the time. I need to stop. Listen, listen, you tell me, God, I love it, but I want to get rid of it because I know it's not right. Mercy, I didn't kill you. Truth is, you let me know how you feel about how you live. In other words, I'm going to clean myself today, Lord, because I'm going to take that word and I'm going to hide it in my heart that I might not sin against you no more. I need the word. The word cleans me. The word washes me. The word won't make me get right, but I have to make a decision to be truthful. Verse 6, mercy and truth. Iniquity is purged, pulled out of you by the fear of the Lord being depart from me. When you really start telling the truth, you can see God might kill you. God might get you. God might send you to hell. Listen, isn't it amazing when folks are dying and all of a sudden they're ready to come to you for the sin? I don't know what they see or what they feel. I personally believe when a person is dying, like say on a sick bed or something, something God's saying something, 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 something is going on. I kind of believe that. Why all of a sudden they want to call the preacher? Y'all know if I happen to die on the way, I can call for no preacher. I'm going to act like I ain't dying. You know why? Because I don't need no last prayer to make sure I'm right. I'm praying now to make sure I'm right. Because I might fall dead right now. And I don't, and listen, I can't, I can't expect to get uh, uh, one of y'all to come and say a last prayer for me when I'm dying. Might not get that opportunity. So I gotta live every day, every moment, every second. Not like gonna die. So therefore, y'all, you gotta clean this up. Because who says you're going to have an opportunity for me to come and pray for you before you die? Hmm. Who told you that? Come on. Last, not the last or two, but come on. Second Timothy chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. Second Timothy chapter 2. But y'all seem to think y'all don't have a, see, I, I won't say y'all, because church of apostles, we know, we know, we, we can't pray around. Amen. But there's a lot of people out there, church folk, non-church folk, they seem to think they don't have time to call on Jesus. I don't know where you get that from. I don't know where you get that from. Because that ain't right. That is not scripture. Y'all feel cold? It should be hot. What kind of say about that? that cold off right up there? You cold? I know I can't believe the card, what I say? Lazy. <laughs> man, ain't got me. He's naturally a hot blood, man. I know he don't care what I say, but that's all right. I'm going to keep saying it because it's true. I mean, you ain't doing enough work around the house. Working some more. Come on, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. Read. Of these things, and I'm not going to go back and talk about all of the things. Y'all go read. He said, of these things, put them in remember, charge them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearer. That goes back when I say God calls us to be saved. Listen, I'm not going to sit around and argue with a bunch of preachers about a word. My thing is, are you living saved? I'm not going to get in here and get into a debate on words, even though I could do it and win it. But the thing is, are you living saved? Subverting. I got to change the way you think. Hallelujah. I got to concentrate on you telling yourself. Hallelujah. So you got people talking about Jesus and Jehosh, Jehoshua, and all of these other, and Yahweh. I'm not going to argue about the word. Let me ask you this. Are you helping folks get saved? 
preaching. Folk get online and talk about how I'm preaching. How many, how many saints that you done made? But you're going to check that. So we're not going to get into how I call Jesus. I call him Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, my wife called me Portis. When she mad, she called me Fulton Portis. Hallelujah. My mother-in-law called me John Portis. Hallelujah. Some of y'all call me Bishop. So I'm not going to get into what title because I'm Brother John in my mind. But this one thing I know. Am I changing the way you think? Am I changing the way how you look at your life? Am I changing the way you live for Jesus? I got to subvert you. Y'all spend too much time dealing and dabbling in words where you know they greet me. It's a Greek word. Who cares about? Tell me what the word of God says and tell me how to stop sinning. That's all I care about. I'm not reading no Greek. I'm not learning no Greek. I'm not studying no Hebrew. Tell me how to change my life. You got all these people that love that highfalutin stuff and they just make them more ignorant. Do y'all know every time I give y'all the definition of a word, I'm giving you the Greek and or the Hebrew? I always know that. When I tell you the word meaning, I'm not giving you man's definition. I'm giving you the Hebrew. If it's in the Old Testament, I'm giving you the Hebrew definition. If it's in the New Testament, I'm giving you the Greek definition. And sometimes I mix the two. When I give y'all a whole list of definitions, that means the word is in Hebrew and in Greek, and I'm giving you all the definitions. But I don't need to tell you whether it's the Hebrew. Is that going to help you? All you know, hallelujah, what the definition means and what you have to do. What am I saying today? We're talking about truth. Truth will clean you. Truth is the word of God. Truth is Jesus Christ. So all you need to know, are you clean? Clean yourself. Are you obeying the scriptures? Come on, read. What, what, what was that? 214, 15. Study to show thyself approved unto man and workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of man. Study to show yourself approved under, under God. Don't worry about what I think about you. Because if I, if you doing right by God, me and you going to get along fine. In other words, how can two walk together except they agree? So if you got me in your version, and you telling me, well, God don't care, God don't understand, God don't love me, and I'm telling you God is, me and you ain't going to talk too long. Y'all ever know sometimes when y'all talk to me and I tell you about what the scriptures say, what this say, and y'all keep telling me how y'all feel, y'all see me get an attitude? Y'all ever notice that? That you're talking stupid. What you saying ain't true. You're calling God a liar. I have a problem with that. You're telling God he's a liar. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, Sabrina. So if he don't answer you right now, you're going to say, well, I know God ain't with me sometimes. Now you're telling me my God is a liar. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to get an attitude. Because God ain't lying. The reason you feel the way you feel is because the sin that's eating you alive starts in it. <laughs> you tell my boys, I see a stick. Go get back in the shower. But then I don't stink. So I guess that funk that's burning my eyes, where you think that's coming from? You stink. Well, All parents can relate to this. I don't smell that. You're immune to it. You ever walk in your children's room and you walk back out fast, don't you? <laughs> My room don't stink. I have to give man credit for this. You know that that for me for breeze commercial. <laughs> And they show you that commercial. And they always use boys because women and girls, they're pretty good. You know, but boys, hallelujah. They say, he smell this, but you smell. He smell one sock. You walk in there and you smell funky football, eight-month-old socks. What am I saying? God, I love you. God is so good. God is saying, all y'all looking at is this one sin, God said, when I look at you, I don't see nothing but sin. That's all I see. But that's, that, hey, you, 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 you stink. You stink. All I smell is funk. That's all I say. God said, wait a minute. Y'all want a scripture for that? He said, y'all, I ain't stinking my... See, y'all know the word. Y'all like, God said, y'all are stinking my nostrils. God said, y'all stink. But I ain't that bad. 
But don't sneak that bad. What's, what's that bad? Your level of tolerance for fault. That's how you determine. So your level of tolerance for sin determines if you don't, if you ain't doing that bad. Come on. What, what was verse with that? 16 said what? But sharp, profane, and vain babbling, all they're going to do is increase unto more ungodliness. Come on, let's go back. Second Thessalonians, so I'm going to let you go home. Amen. Y'all say you're cold. I'm going to let you go home. Is it first or second Thessalonians? Third. First Thessalonians. Chapter what? Five? I want to read verse nine. What does it say? Everybody got it? First Thessalonians chapter five, verse nine says what? But God have not appointed us to wreck. But to obtain what? But to obtain salvation by our God said, I didn't call y'all to fight. Listen. Listen, COE. And I'm always preaching to y'all. And everybody else is listening. I'm preaching to you. You listen. But I'm, my, my, my concern is church of apostolicity first. Listen. Listen. God said, I don't want y'all dealing it in you see the word I wrote down. I don't want y'all dealing with the, sec, the secularized society. I don't want y'all dealing with what the world is doing. It's going to go through. The rapture is coming. The rapture is close. Y'all stop worrying about it. Now that's that's why we keep going to that, that chapter in those verses. Because the world, the church is getting involved in that stuff. And God is saying, I didn't call y'all to rap. I called y'all to be saved. I didn't call y'all to fight against Caesar. I didn't call y'all to fight against Caesar. I called y'all to give me what belongs to me, which is you. I want you all. Y'all stop fighting against all of this social injustice and all of these politicians and all of this stuff. Y'all stop fighting against that. I didn't call y'all to rap. I called y'all to be saved. Now, in order to be saved, I got to clean myself. I don't clean myself. This is, you're not going to make it. In other words, what the church model? Stop sinning. If you don't stop sinning, you're not going to make it to heaven. Stop trying to be slick. Come on, let us stay. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to be clean. You want to be clean? Yes. I want to be clean. I'm going to be clean. And when I get clean, I'm going to stay clean. I'm going to stay clean. It brings back to mind, I think a couple of weeks ago or something, when God said, John, you're not taking care of yourself like you used to. In other words, John, now I took that to be natural, but it's also spiritual. In other words, John, I don't know if it was before or after the virus, but God would let me know, John. It was after when he told me, but I don't know if he was saying before or after was I not taking care of myself, but I got back on I got back on it. Like, man, Lord, you right. In other words, y'all, this y'all not taking care of yourself. Y'all not cleaning yourself. Y'all don't stop. I don't know what caused you to stop. Like, I don't know what caused you to stop. Maybe we got slack. Maybe we got lazy. Maybe we got tired. I don't know. But God is saying, y'all need to take care of yourself. Y'all need to stop sin. Y'all need to clean yourself. Y'all need to go back and go back to your first love. Pick the scriptures back up. Watch this. And as I'm talking, God is letting me know. He said, what happened, John, because of this coronavirus, so many people got afraid, afraid, and got diverted, and they thinking, y'all forgot to stop sinning. We forgot to stop sinning. We too busy buying masks, gloves, six feet. God said, but y'all forgot to stop lying. Y'all forgot to remember the rapture is close. You know, let it slip your mind. Hallelujah. It's time for us to put back on that garment of salvation, that garment of faith. It's time for us to get the helmet. It's time for us to start with the preparation of the God. It's time for us to go back, Church of Apostles, to, to live right. Amen. Amen. I understand we, we, we had a moment. We weren't able to come together. We had to do it. And that was another thing. And see, now watch this. 
if it did, the Church of Apostle Initiative is doing it to everybody. That's why it's time for y'all to come back to church. So what we outside? We need to be in a gathering. So what we can't hug and shake hands like we used to. But we need to be in a gathering. You can say what you want. Forsake not the assembly. I understand we have to separate for a while. But it's time for us to get back together and start realizing we need congregations. We need to get together. We don't have to break the law of the land to do this the right way. But we need to get back together because the Antichrist is stirring up. He's causing division. He's causing reason and ways to keep people from coming to Christ. Hallelujah. And we can't fall for it, y'all, because we are saved. Do y'all hear me, COA? We are saved. I'm not, I'm not, and she is not putting me down. If you're not coming because you're afraid of the virus, listen, at least come and park in your car and sit in your car. But get up, get out of the house, get out of the bed, put your clothes on, stop getting lazy. You don't realize it's making you lazy. You're getting up at the last minute, listen, you're sitting in front of your phone, your tablet, your computer, or your TV, and you got music playing, you're sewing, you're doing something else. I, listen, you're distracted. I don't care what you say. You're not sitting there and just solely looking at me. Human nature won't let you do that because you're in that house. And then you remember, you've been meaning to knock that dust off that shelf. And you over there doing that. Amen, preacher. You ain't listening to me. You done found, listen, it's human nature to be distracted. You're distracted sitting in my presence. Some of y'all be sitting here texting. I'm preaching. I see your finger going across your phone. What that mean? You're distracted. If you can do it in my presence, you sure can't do it out of my presence. What am I saying, y'all? Clean yourself. Clean yourself. Go back to the word of God. Amen. Go back to the word of God. Father God in the precious, wonderful name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you, Lord, because of who you are. We say thank you, Lord God. Lord, we don't like the fact that you disappointed in us today. But we thank you for the mercy to showing us that you're disappointed and you want us to go clean ourselves. You want us to go and take the word. Hallelujah. Clean honey. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. You want us to remove all of those secret sins, those hidden sins, those sins we don't want to talk about. Hallelujah. You want us to go and wipe out ourselves better with the word. You want us to go in our mind and stop justifying all the wrong we're doing. You want us to look to you and say, Lord, I love this sin. Get me to stop it. Lord, I don't want to do it no more. Lord, I want to stop. Ha, we have the glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, right now for coming in our minds and our hearts and showing us what we're going on. We thank you for telling us today to cleanse ourselves. We thank you, Lord God, for helping, hallelujah, to change the way we think, hallelujah. We thank you for telling us we gotta scrub ourselves. Get rid of the soft towel. Get rid of the soft word. Get rid of the soft scripture and use the hard scripture, hallelujah. Thank the Lord God for showing us that we gotta scrub ourselves better. We got to get in the fiery or furnace of correction, hallelujah. We got to scrub ourselves with a hard towel, with hard and hot water. Hallelujah. That we got to use more soap. We got to clean ourselves. We, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for showing us that we're not doing it right. We done, we done, we done messed up. But we thank you for opening our eyes and our heart and our minds on today. To show we got to go back to the old way. We got to go back to the way we were before the pandemic. We got to go back the way we were before Corona. High. We got to go back before we, hallelujah, go back when we were coming to church regularly two times, three times a day. Lord, we thank you, hallelujah, for bringing us back the way we once were. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for this sermon. We thank you for this guidance. We thank you for this teaching on this day. Because this is the day that you have made. And, Lord, this is a beautiful day. Hallelujah. We, we glory. Lord, we thank you for giving us beautiful Sundays, Lord. We thank you, Father, that Sunday belongs to us. That we can come together and hear your word and do better. Hallelujah. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. 
Everybody say it in Jesus' name. Everybody say it in Jesus' name. And everybody